Chapter 6, Exercise Epidemiology. Epidemiology is the distribution and determinants of disease. Exercise is planned or structured bouts of physical activity. Together, it's the relationship between exercise and the risk for various diseases. Um, for some history on this field, it dates back to the ancient Greeks who recommended vis vigorous physical exercise as a treatment to improve mental health and overcome physical illness. And then in the mid-1600s, Joseph Duquesne, who was a, a Swiss pharmacologist, which advocated gymnastics as a way to improve digestion, strengthen heart and joints, and improve blood circulation in the lungs. And then in the 1700s and 1800s, um, Thomas K. Curitan performed some of the first research studies that examined the relationship between exercise and health. And then in, in 1975 and throughout 1988, the first research study by Paffenbarger and Hale and Slattery and Jacobs found that individuals involved in occupations that had large amounts of physical activity were less susceptible to coronary heart disease. Some areas of study is cardiovascular disease, which is any disease that affects the cardiovascular system. It's about 20% of deaths per year worldwide. It's the number one killer since 1900 in the U.S. Physical activity decreases your risk. In increased HDL levels therefore decreases risk of atherosclerosis, which is deposits of fatty plaques on the inner linings of arteries, which compromises blood flow. Hypertension, which is persistently high arterial blood pressure, which may have no known cause or may be associated with other primary diseases. It's individuals that regularly performed exercise at intensities between 40 to 70 percent of aerobic capacity demonstrated fewer incidences of hypertension. Um, another area of studies is within diabetes which is the chronic disease caused by deficiency in production or use of insulin. And there are two types of diabetes. Um, type 1 is developed during childhood and is characterized by the failure of the pancreas to produce insulin. And it is known that physical activity can help, but does little to prevent or cure this disease. Um, and type 2 is more common and usually um, occurs later in adulthood, um, but occurs due to lack of insulin insensitivity. So the disease is preventable by diet, weight loss, and physical activity. Another area of study is in, with, in mental health, um, specifically depression, which is persistently depressed mood or loss of interest in activity that causes significant impairment in daily life. Um, and it is shown that increased physical activity can treat and prevent depression because it has similar effects as in drug treatment and psychotherapy, but the effects of physical activity last much longer. There are some research methods, incident rate is the frequency or number of events that occur over defined time period divided by average population size at risk. It allows incident rates to be compared without bias introduced by differences in factors like age, ethnicity, or sex. There's cross-sectional, which measures risk factors and presence or absence of a disease at the same time. It's inexpensive, but it cannot determine potential cause-effect relationships. There's case control studies, which uses subjects who are selected based on presence of disease being investigated and then matched with controls, the subjects who don't have disease. It's a small number of subjects, and it allows for investigation of multiple risk factors at the same time. Um, another research method is the prospective cohort, um, which the study um, of subjects that are randomly selected from a defined population, and then baseline information is collected regarding potential risk factors for disease of interest. So these subjects are followed over time to track incidence of disease. Um, this manner is costly and time consuming, but also advantageous because the risk profile is established before the outcome is assessed and data collection is controlled. And the last method of research is the randomized controlled trial in which subjects are randomly assigned to either an experimental or placebo group. And this is known as the gold standard for testing in exercise epidemiology because it gives researchers more control over the subjects that are randomly assigned to either the experimental or placebo groups. Some technology that's 
being used is the surveillance system, which conducts surveys in population every year for an extended period of time to measure trends. It uses software programs to analyze and store data. There's exercise-based video games can also be useful to encourage and promote physical activities such as the Nintendo Wii, the Kinect, and PlayStation 3. Um, and the employment and professional organizations for this field um, in earlier times, the most exercise epidemiologists were employed in the college and university settings where they taught courses and conducted research, but increased growth has created more opportunities in this area, um, such as the nationally funded organizations and also in the health-related fitness settings. And some professional associations um, in this field include the International Epidemiological Association, the American Public Health Association, American Heart Association, the American Diabetes Association, and the American Cancer Society. Some certifications for a clinical certification is Certified Clinical Exercise Specialist, Registered Clinical Exercise Physiologist, the sp then there's specialty certifications, which are Certified Cancer Exercise Trainer, Certified Inclusive Fitness Trainer, Physical Activity and Public Health Specialist, and for future directions, it's focused on examining the factors that underlie childhood obesity and all-cause mortality.